$10 donation from Fizu. Good luck beating people up in the park, Koal, and I hope you finish in good Tim. Also, this game is somehow based on an actual Spider-Man story, although I don't remember the bit where he punches people in the park. We have a $50 donation from Clep. Parker, get me pictures of Spider-Man! We have a $15 donation from Kirby. Good luck, Kowal. Sorry I'll miss your Baldur's Gate run tomorrow, but at least I caught the worst Spider-Man game ever made! We have an anonymous $500 donation. <laughs> donating, donating for my favorite couch commentator, Puexel. Is this your favorite Final Fantasy game? Donation to Puexel's Choice. We have a $15 donation from Space Coyote. I just spent nearly 12 hours flying home from AGDQ. Dare I stay up watching Awful Block instead of going to sleep? Anyway, Rosa should be named Clage. We have a $10 donation from Cosmic the Dolphin. Yo, Koal, cheering you on with all I got, buddy. Cheering you on as best I can from the Spanish restream, as is everyone else watching over there. Good luck. Oh, no. Now I have to read something in Spanish. I can't. This is going to be pronounced very wrong. Buen suerte. Eh? I apologize. We do have some upcoming incentives uh, for Secret of Evermore. We can name the boy and his dog. Uh, in Dishonored, you can kill or save Sam. Uh, also for Secret of Evermore, you can have Meta Sigma sing the Lobotomy Chicken song. Um, I was just shown what that was, and it's uh, bizarre. <laughs> so if you want to see that, you should donate to that. Uh, the bonus game, I Want to Be the Boshi. Uh, is currently sitting at $21,787.59 out of $37,500, so we still need a little bit more to uh, get it up there. We also have for Spelunky the Secret Sloth Damsel, currently sitting at $2,098.77 out of $5,000.
Also, it should be noted that practically every character in Final Fantasy IV has Arby's as some possible name <laughs> that people have been wanting. So if we could get all Arby's team going, maybe, maybe that'll happen. Currently for Final Fantasy IV, the leading name for Palum is JP. The leading name for Tella is Arby's. Leading name for Yang is Happy. Leading name for Rosa is Clage. Leading name for Edward is Spoon. Uh, Yang, uh, no, no, that's sorry. Yang's vegetables is something else. Uh, that's something you donate towards. <laughs> Reading too fast here. Um, for Final Fantasy IV, Rydie is leading name right now is Bethus. Kane's leading name is Batman. Cecil's leading name is Biff. Poram's leading name is Palum. So, if you want to uh, get things super confusing, or if you wish to uh, rekindle the rivalry between Biff and Arby's, get those donations in. We have a $5 donation from Iggy Zig. Hey, AGDQ, looking forward to the Bubsy 2 run. Yes, I'm that guy. Well, you have to wait no longer because now it's time for Bubsy 2. Yeah. Okay, okay, so like, so... So basically, there's like three. I'm, I'm doing the grand tour category of this, and I like these controls. So yeah, we'll just start the count, countdown right now in five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, so Bubsy 2 is uh, kind of a mess. Basically, the way it's laid out is we get three different floors, and on each of the three floors, there are five stages. It's going to repeat the flavor of those five stages from floor to floor, so we'll get three of these Egypt levels and then three of all the other types that we're going to see. And uh, it's all a maze. So in this case, uh, Garment Security has memorized where to go in this maze, as well as a couple little mi minor movement techniques to pick up some consumable items for later in the run. Yeah. Uh, it's something that's relatively new to Bubsy 2, I think. I remember there being consumables in Bubsy 1, but... Nah. Uh, in this case, specifically what we're looking for are smart bombs, which are those sort of like black potion-looking things that uh, are thrown throughout the level. You can see one on the screen there. Oh, yeah. Smart bombs will kill every enemy on screen except for bosses, and uh, they are very, very important for speed tech later in the run. Yeah, one change with Bubsy 2 as well, if anybody played the first one, you die in one hit. With this game, though, you die in three. So luckily you have a little bit more leeway, but still, with risky strats, you're going to take damage in some places. It's just going to happen. And also in a marathon setting, too, it's just safer to try and pick up extra lives and band-aids as possible. Band-aids actually refresh you back to your three hits. Now, in spite of the fact that you can get hit three times, there's a whole lot of stuff in this game that is instant death, and obviously yeah. great lengths will be taken to avoid that stuff, but particularly in these space levels, there's a lot of items that cause instant death that you have to navigate through. And uh, we're gonna see a couple of them momentarily when we get through this little auto-scroller segment. I still hate those doors, okay? Because you go in, sense. but you have to go back through it. Because <laughs> why not? So those dangling fish hooks there are actually instant death for Bubsy, but only when they feel like it. Sometimes they don't do any damage at all, sometimes you touch them and you're instantly dead and you sort of pop like a balloon. It's really weird. I think it's with, if you're moving down and, and the other one's moving up, and the obstacle's moving up, moving down, or you're yeah, moving up to the definitely has something to do with trajectory. Uh, one of the other things going on during this run is at the end of each stage there's a giant red marble and the speed and trajectory at which you hit the marble determines how many other little marbles spray out of it and uh, you actually have to either despawn all those marbles or collect all of those marbles to advance to the next stage and so to manipulate the end of the stage and make it a little faster what we try to do is slow down or try and get underneath that red marble before we hit it and that causes uh, fewer of those marbles to be spawned so it's easier to chase them off screen or collect them. So these music levels are just pure evil okay everything is out to murder you like yeah it's overly populated with enemies in a lot of ways and has a lot of instant death wow this music is <laughs> so... no i hate this music okay <laughs> seriously the first bubsy had some good music but this is all just trash okay utter this trash is, this is fantastic <laughs> fantastic 
Yes. No, oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, one of the things that happened in that stage is Garbun Security picked up a box with a marble on it. That was a 100 marble box. It's actually something that if you can avoid, you usually try and avoid it, uh, but the platform happened to be the only way that uh, Garbun Security could land safely. So There are probably faster ways to do that, but I just do that because it just seems fast and consistent, and I just take the time loss. And for marathon safety, too, there's no real reason to avoid it. But the purpose of avoiding marbles, and in particular the marble boxes, is at the end of the stage it counts down, and it's one frame per marble collected. So you lose one. 100 frames for that box, which is like two and a quarter seconds or something like that. Something like that. Couldn't you buy smart bombs, though, with them? Nah, marble stones aren't used for, like, the trading cards that you see are what, are what give you money to buy stuff. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, the marbles really don't do much for you at all, except kind of antagonize you in a speed run. Um, there is a trick for these plane stages. We might be able to see it today, but it involves something that we call plane skip. It's something that I found by accident one morning when I was doing speed runs, and uh, I happened to get it on stream, and I clipped it and watched it a few times, tried to duplicate it. We were able to get it to happen maybe three or four times since then, which was like eight months ago. Uh, it's <laughs> extraordinarily rare. It's a frame-perfect, input-perfect trick that involves having the plane turn around at the same frame that it makes contact with the red marble, and it causes zero marbles, or sometimes two, to spawn instead of the solid, like, 10-second string of marbles that it's thrown out. Yeah, it saves a good amount of time, but I don't know. That was a really rare. good medieval one. So now we've seen all five flavors of stages, and we get to see the boss fights. So there's a repeating boss fight, and this one is uh, the repeating one. And it's pretty basic. It's a couple enemies from the different worlds that just pop out of door panels and shoot stuff at you. It barely even qualifies as a boss. So you see me doing double hits here, like, if you hit it at the right time, like, you hear the sound effect kind of go twice, and that means you're doing a double hit, and you can... Okay, that boss... That was almost a stuff. perfect fight, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. With the double hits, uh, the absolute perfect fight is only one jump fewer than we just saw. So, and we'll get another shot at it, too. Garbin Security is actually very good at the boss fights in this game, much better than I am. Yeah. Thanks, Wait, man. that's not mocking Thanks, you. Man. Okay, no, no. appreciate no. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've heard you complain plenty about the boss fights, okay? Yeah, yeah. So this uh, particular level actually has some really cool movement tech, and it's uh, very divergent uh, how we approach this stage. My approach is completely different from the way the Garbin Security does this. Uh, it's all following the same path, but it's a lot of different bouncing off of enemies, and uh, just the way that the platforming is executed is totally different. So it winds up making for a very different looking run that actually comes in at roughly the same time. And that water is trying to push Garbin Security to the left of the screen, and by hopping twice, we can actually get over that water and advance to the next sequence, which is dropping down here. And slipping in between those two enemies for the win. That was actually really good. Yeah, yeah that was a very good Egypt, too. Yeah. Like, I think my best is 30. Like, that was a 14, 19. My best is 14, 20, I think. Oh, wow. Huh. Now, there is a difficulty curve in this game, but it's not really applicable to all the different stage types. The music levels get dramatically harder, and the Egypt levels get a little bit harder, but the space levels actually seem to get easier. I was gonna say, after playing it myself, difficulty curve is right at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Most of it is knowing where to go. Uh, Still better than Jack. Oh, that was close. <laughs> So again, these hooks can instant kill you. Uh, they pop you like a balloon. <laughs> yeah, the hitboxes, like, it's, a lot of the time it can look like you should die, but you don't, so, yeah. And I think something has to do, as you said earlier, with the trajectory that you come in at it. If you're coming in from underneath it, it seems to be less brutal, but uh, from that angle, you can only drop onto it, and that's the absolute worst case scenario. Yeah, there are a lot of things that don't look like they would hurt you as well. Uh, some of the ground here, they're little spikes. It's hard to tell that they're actually spikes, though. They do look like just part of the terrain. And uh, you might have noticed that Garbun Security actually killed all the enemies leading up to the marble there as well. And that is uh, largely for purposes of lag. Because there is some alternate gravity going on in the space stages, the marbles lag out the screen really bad. And having any enemies on screen exacerbates it like 10 times over. So leading up to that marble, it's really critical for the speedrun to make sure that all the enemies on screen are defeated. 
Oh, yeah, th this level is pretty challenging as well. Yeah, kind of messed up the fast route right there. Yeah, good safety strat, though. Uh, yeah. So there's some odd maneuvering that goes into this whole leftward jump, and it uh, looks like Urban Security nailed it. It's actually really hard to get that bounce into the pipe and have the pipe knock you back down under the trampoline. It usually what happens is you launch yourself straight up into the air, and you have to wait a few seconds for Bubsy to fall all the way back down. Yeah. And this is where I learned that you can clip through the floor. <laughs> yeah. <Wow. laughs> so don't do that. <laughs> Good glide. Very clean music, too. Yeah, Very security is making this game look real playable, but I promise it's not. <laughs> I was going to say, with that stage, I would be extremely happy. That yeah, one, that, one that was well. very clean. That was very clean. I unironically think this is a fun game. It's really <laughs> fun, but it is, like, a mess. No. <laughs> it's, it's objectively not well put together. I'm going to have a different opinion. This game is not fun, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I made my husband play. <laughs> 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 Good memories. <laughs> so you're walking home, huh? Oh, geez. Yeah, all the way back to Utah. <laughs> so these plane levels are largely auto-scrollers, except uh, Garvin Security has two speeds on the plane, so uh, we can slow it down, we can speed it up, and also you can make U-turns in it. So uh, the way they make a maze out of it is they make all these ca uh, caves and tunnels that spin you around or put you in different locations that don't make any Euclidean logic. So you wind up taking a doorway and you wind up on the other side of the stage. If you make a U-turn go back in, you wind up next door to that. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, and so trying to figure out which way is the fastest through those stages has become very difficult because a lot of the times you don't know if you're gonna go through a cave and then make a U-turn and come back out. So uh, there's a lot of differing paths you can take in that specific stage. Okay, I'm gonna try risky strat here. It may cause me to die, we'll see. Uh, uh, got part one. And Get it? Get it? Yeah! yeah. No, it's yeah. that hard. So that's a weird jump. You can do it the fastest by using Bubsy's regular speed jump, which is, uh, I think it's usually the C button on the controller, but Garvin Security plays it reversed. Um, if you do that and you hold in the button, uh, rather than just tapping it, Bubsy launches himself into the fire, which isn't going to kill him, but it stops his momentum and he falls into the pit 100% of the time. Um, the safest way to do it is using the gliding jump, which has a little bit lower of a trajectory, a little lower velocity. So it's actually slower for the speed run, but it's a lot safer. And uh, Garvin Security looks like it went for the riskier strat and it paid off. Yeah. Boss time. Now the bosses take a few extra hits here, so even though Garvin Security got the double hits, it didn't kill the bosses instantly. Good. Yeah, one jump away from perfect again. So the third floor is kind of weird. It's actually laid out differently from the other two floors, even though it's got the same five stages in it. And uh, this stage in particular is really, really bizarre, because in this game there's the east wing and the west wing, and this run is the east wing. The west wing is actually 14 different levels, and this level. So, so for whatever reason, they just decided to use this one twice. And also, I want to point out that, like, the jump, I got, the damage I avoided taking at the beginning, that's, like, pretty much totally random. Like, I, a lot, most of the time, I just take a hit there. Yeah, there is a uh, very, very slight uh, user-manipulated window there that's not even worth the effort of trying to do. It's actually more trouble than it's worth. Taking the damage is usually just faster than trying to manipulate things. Yeah. Collecting a Band-Aid there to get back to full health. Which is a good thing, because this stage can actually troll you a lot near the end. Sometimes, like, for some of these things, you can just take hits on them. Like, I didn't take any there, but sometimes that just happens when you really don't do anything different. Yeah, there's a sheep off screen there that bleats at you, and the bleats are what's causing that little wavy motion line. That wavy motion line does damage Bubsy, and uh, there's not much you can do about it if it happens to be in the path of where the trampoline launches you. Time for this level. Yes. So this one is what we like to call the run killer. 
Um, this is the hardest of the music stages in the game. It's got a really odd path to get through it. Uh, there's a few different ways that we manipulate the beginning part of the stage differently. Good save on that. That could have been a lot worse. Uh, just get the... It's okay. Oh, there's a man in there. Yeah, okay. that'll help. So I was, I was wanting to not take a damage there, but it happened. So we really want a lot of left-to-right momentum here because of two reasons. One is it lets you glide right over all the enemies safely. The other is there's actually a potential skip you can do. Uh, you can actually clip through the trombone pipe that's in the ceiling, and that would put you right at the end of the stage. It would actually save like a minute on the run. Uh, it's something that I have not managed to replicate. Uh, we've tried to do it a few times and uh, just really haven't been able to find a consistent way to get that movement. But every once in a while, the game throws you a bone and uh, gives you a chance to just save time for no reason. This is the bounty of all those smart bombs that were picked up earlier in the run. That part of the stage is very dangerous. Wow, a deathless yeah, that was run really, of that really level. Nice. Yeah, there had to be some backup strats in there, but they paid off. Yeah, yeah. it was mostly clean. The really scary part of that stage is actually uh, when he hits the penguin and bounces up over the pipe. Yeah, like if you mess that up, like it costs a lot of time because you, like the enemies don't respond after you die, so you have to like find another way to get through there. So this stage is really funny. It likes to think that it's complicated, but there's actually a long jump to skip pretty much all of it. And yeah, we're done with the stage. <laughs> Good job, Bubsy. I'm proud of you. Being a trained professional. Professional. Oh, yeah. So like every great level, this one starts with us going in the door that we started at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this drop can be a little awkward sometimes because this guy who shoots green squares at you can shoot squares and knock you back through the floor. And as you can see, you can clip upwards through the floor when you're having uh, the damage animation. And with the gravity altered here, yeah, you, you go flying higher than you, you normally would. And dropping back down takes longer, so it can be a huge time waster if he shoots you twice. Thankfully, this door actually puts us right at the end of the stage, so the maze is pretty much overcome immediately. And you see again that Garvin Security stops on a dime to try and make sure that we're hitting that marble at the end at a very nice low rate of speed and from underneath it. Yeah. It's really dangerous in that stage because the marbles can actually clip through part of the floor on the right-hand side of the screen and get trapped there, and you have to wait for them to despawn, which takes an extra eight seconds. <laughs> So yeah, the point levels, they're just, as far as it's basically just about memorizing where everything is. Yeah. One more shot at the plane skip, though. Yeah. Yeah, come on, plane skip. Uh, so this is kind of an interesting sequence that we're in here. Garvin Security had a safety strat to go lower into that room than we usually go. Typically, the goal is to try and shoot the bottom enemy from the two enemies being carried by each other. Uh, because you shoot the top enemy, they drop the first enemy, and it'll actually land on you. Nice save. Yeah, yeah. I was a little bit worried health-wise there, but yeah. you managed to pull it off. Got so, a little dicey, but it, it was a good recovery. So the health is indicated at the top right. You see that Bubsy's sad, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little panicked, perhaps. But we're coming up on the final boss here, and uh, we'll give you a warning when time is about to happen. But it's going to be after the helmet is knocked off the boss. So this boss fight is kind of dopey for a lot of reasons. One is that he'll randomly shoot lightning bolts, and he'll aim more or less where Bubsy is. Uh, but sometimes he just aims upward for some reason and will just hit you on your way down. Um, the goal for Garbin Security is to stay up in the air as long as possible, but if the boss jumps into you and you clip into the roof, time's coming up. Time. Holy cow. Uh, that was a quick boss fight. <laughs> that was a really yeah. good run. So, yeah, yeah, that was a 1736 at a GDQ. That's uh, pretty good. So, what's the record again? 1725. Yeah. So. <laughs> 11 seconds off? <laughs> Holy crap. That was uh, a great run. 
Great job. And enjoy the ending. Yep. That this is your payoff. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. <laughs> nice. Wow. Well done. Well done. Wait, Bubsy has children? Nephews. Yeah. Oh, uh, nephews. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's in the lore. It's in. It, it's. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. They're playable characters. <laughs> the Bubsy lore bible. Look into it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to Google. <laughs> I can get you a signed copy. <laughs> So yeah, I guess with that, that's...